Hey Kali Gang, what it do? Alright, so today we're going to be getting into a reaction from the page called Culture Spill. Alright, shout out to you guys. Alright, they released a video titled FBI Releases Witness Statement on Diddy's Parties. Orgies Gone Wrong. Y'all, alright, so let's get into it. But first thing is first, please like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell notification so you know if it's when I post it up to date. Please help your girl's dreams come true becoming a full-time YouTuber. All right, I hit the monetization, but now the real work begins. The next goal is 5K subs and a bajillion watch hours. So help your girl's dream come true by doing that. It's free 99 and just give me, what, 10, 10 minutes of your time? Or maybe check out a playlist. I have a lot. Cooking, um, tutorials, hair, makeup, just a whole bunch of things. Check them out. But yeah, so let's get into it. Culture spill. Spilling the tea. Let's go. Party. Lots of big names. There was an artist there who said, Hey, McCray, around 1 a.m., make sure you're not here. You just don't want to be here at 1 in the morning. That big ass bed, y'all. That big bed. He's a, that my bed. The big bed. That big bed, okay. Mama said, Don't jump on the bed. We jumping. Yeah. So whoever the guy was speaking in the very beginning of the video, the fact that one of his friends was like, yo, you don't want to be here past one o'clock is a real one. All right. They're like, this is my friend. They're not down with that. They don't know what they're getting into. I don't want them to get hurt. So let's warn them. Let's tell them how you need to be gone by one o'clock. Like that's what's up. But anyway, sorry guys. I just had to say that, but we all need a real one like that in our friend group. All right. Point blank. This is true, but I'm told that when you go to a hotel, anytime you go to a hotel, you don't just check in the way everybody else does. You send someone ahead to prepare the hotel room for you. That's called preparing the sexy. Preparing the sexy? Yeah. What's preparing the sexy? I mean, when I walk in, I mean, I, I definitely um, take pride in being the originator of the pre preparation of the... Y'all, just when we thought we heard all we needed to know about Diddy's freak off parties, reports are coming out that federal agents are reaching out to witnesses to share what exactly happened at those freak offs. And let me tell you, the details coming to light are way darker and more disturbing than anything we've heard so far. Like, we all know Diddy threw some wild parties, but this child is a whole different level. So here's what's going down. Insiders are spilling that the feds are building a case around these notorious freak offs and now witnesses are stepping forward and what they're saying about what really went down at these events is sickening even for hollywood there are whispers of out of control behavior some borderline satanic ritual mess and full-blown ex or wrong and then there's this one man on x who shared a video spilling the tea on how diddy would use tapes of these freak off sessions to blackmail some high profile executives but get this this man's whole account was removed from x before people could catch Ooh. on to what he was trying to say in his video so clearly diddy is just the tip of the iceberg here mm -hmm. and it looks like yes, there are is. a whole bunch of powerful individuals who were involved in those freak off sessions and now that diddy has been placed on watch folks are speculating that these higher ups that he was blackmailing will try to Epstein him. Y'all, this whole situation is absolutely terrifying. We'll see. So okay. Mm -hmm. us, I'm about to give you the full mm -hmm. scoop on what happened at Diddy's Freak Offs. And on my way upstairs, there was like this couch. And on the couch, I saw a couple of guys really going at it hard and heavy. Man, and I was like, oh. As I started moving up the stairs, I passed them up and I noticed that it wasn't just those two guys. It was more and more people just going at it. Okay, y'all, let's talk about this for real. Because a lot of people have been out here making... He was saying, as I'm going upstairs, I'm passing people and they just getting it in, boning, just just smashing like there's nobody watching. Like that baby oil must have been laced with some some of the craziest GHB and whatever else they put in there, because that is just crazy to think about jokes, memes, and sketches about Diddy's freak offs and those 1,000 bottles of baby oil. But trust me, there is nothing funny about this situation. What we're really seeing here is a dark glimpse into just how twisted and dangerous the industry can be. These powerful people, the ones running the show behind the scenes, will stop at nothing to satisfy their sick, twisted desires. And Diddy might just be one of many pawns in this game. Now here's where we get even mm -hmm. more wild. While Diddy's name is all over the headlines right now, it's looking like there are 
much bigger fish out there who are sweating hard over what he could expose. These high profile figures are shaking in their boots because if Diddy talks, the fallout could be massive. And guess what? It's just been confirmed that Diddy's now yes, on they the are. side watch at the Brooklyn jail where he's awaiting trial for his alleged role in an ex- Ring. According to the New York Post, Diddy's mental state is unclear, but they're putting him on watch as a preventative measure. Now, you know people are- His mental state is unclear because he was doing rugs, all right, with the D for literally 10, 15 years, okay? So now he's clean and sober, possibly, but we don't really know. And of course, his mental state's going to be not great all over the place. He's literally going to be going through withdrawals um there's really no telling though like this is just crazy this is ooh. already out here comparing this whole situation to jeffrey epstein's case remember how epstein was supposedly found dead in his jail cell after taking his own life yeah nobody really bought that story epstein had dirt no we didn't no we didn't politicians and we all know he was running some dark behind the scenes blackmail operation he lured these high profile people to his sick parties get them involved with individuals underage and allegedly take the whole thing using the mm -hmm. footage to blackmail them for who knows what and before you ask what the exactly was, i well, said that i know, said that i can't get into the full details here because youtube will snatch this video down real quick but mm -hmm. if you do some digging into epstein's background his connections and the role his accomplice is maxwell and her father played you'll start to piece together which foreign country's intelligence agency epstein allegedly worked for now let's get back to diddy because the whispers in the industry are wild word on the street is that diddy was pulling the same kind of moves as epstein allegedly his freak offs weren't just about wild parties they might have been part of a deeper more disturbing blackmail operation there's speculation that he was also luring big names to these parties getting them involved in shady situations and possibly using that as leverage and now with all these Duh. details coming to light the industry is in full-on panic mode the higher-ups are terrified that if diddy spills what he knows it could expose a whole web of powerful individuals doing things they really don't want the public to know about and the mm -hmm. fact that diddy is on watch is sending red flags everywhere and people that's exactly are what it that is higher ups he was blackmailing for years might pull an epstein on him now how do we know that diddy was really running a blackmail operation well technically we don't know for sure but there have been plenty of clues and hints dropped by multiple industry insiders that paint a pretty clear picture about those freak off sessions and the scary part is that it looks like people are now being silenced left and right for trying to expose high profile individuals who attended diddy's freak offs so there's this user on x who went by the handle at a underscore major 420 who's been dropping hints on his account about diddy's parties even before Cassie got the ball rolling with her lawsuit back in November. Ooh. This user, who apparently works in the music industry, would occasionally post about Sir. how he can't wait until Diddy and his music executive bosses are exposed because people don't know half of how dark the industry really is. Now, you know no, we don't. Is? People are so brainwashed to worship wealth that every time someone criticizes a rich celebrity, folks jump to their defense, accusing the critics of being they broke do. and jealous. They do. But now that Diddy is behind bars, the narrative is definitely shifting, and people are digging up those old posts from folks who have been trying to sound the alarm about Diddy for years. So anyway, mm -hmm, after Diddy's yes arrest, this user at A underscore Major 420 came back on X and posted a video where he talked about how when Diddy was just starting out in his career, he allegedly threw one of his infamous parties and invited all the top Jewish executives in the industry. But here's where things take a dark turn. Rumor has it he laced their drinks with something that, let's just say, made everyone a little too loose. And before you know it, the party spiraled into a full-blown or but diddy wasn't there just a party the tea is that he supposedly recorded everything that went down that night oh, and then of course used he those did. recordings to start blackmailing these powerful execs word on the street is that diddy got a lot of his early influence and power by holding this footage over these executives heads using it as leverage to make some major moves so anyway that user on x who posted the video about how diddy started blackmailing these executives well he had his whole account removed by x and the video has now disappeared from the internet I really did my best to try to find it, y'all, but they really buried that video. They removed it so quickly that no one was able to do a screen recording. But if it pops up somewhere, I'll make sure to update y'all on that. But even without the... I'm gonna try to find that video. I'm gonna try to find it. That's one thing I can give myself props on. Your girl is good at trying to find a video. And when I want to find a video, I find that video. So I'm trying to find the video. So remind me in the comments. Find the video.
video, there have been rumors about Diddy's blackmail parties floating around online for a minute now. There's this independent journalist, Ian Carroll, who shared several videos a few months back about Diddy's rumored blackmail ring. And he alleged that this has been going on in Hollywood for decades. And y'all, this rabbit hole is deep. In order to understand this lawsuit against P. Diddy, you need to understand the history of blackmail. A lot of people in the comments are misunderstanding why rap music is so anti-gay. And a lot of people understand the ties of Israel and the Mossad to blackmail by Epstein. But a lot of people don't realize the ties of blackmail back to the invention of blackmail and the Jewish mob. So if you don't know what's going on, Diddy, one of the most influential people in the rap industry over the last 30 years, just got served this court case that alleged all kinds of crimes, including especially having all of his homes wired with cameras and hosting parties with underage girls, rappers, label executives, celebrities, politicians, and collecting sex mail on tons of important people. Like we're talking Jeffrey Epstein level of operation, but in the music and entertainment industries. The FBI was founded by J. Edgar Hoover. He actually was the head of the Bureau of Investigation, the BOI, before the FBI was even invented back in the 20s. He served there for 11 years, then they invented the FBI, and he served as the head of the FBI for 37 years, totaling 48 years leading what was more or less the FBI. So we're talking like all the way from like the Great Depression through World War II into like the 60s, like through the 60s music revolution into Damn. the 70s. All of that time period, the FBI was led by the same person, and he was one of the most corrupt government officials in all of U.S. history. Of and course he was. The state of organized crime and of law enforcement in America is impossible if you don't know about J. Edgar Hoover. And understanding the nature of the is impossible if you don't know about Sexual Black Lansky, male. who was a boss in the Jewish mob back in the 30s, 20s, like, you know, like, Prohibition days and so on. Meyer Lansky, this Jewish mob boss, basically invented the concept of blackmail. And he did it. Actual blackmail. Blackmailing J. Edgar Hoover, the guy who was explicitly supposed to be taking guys like Meyer Lansky down. The Wikipedia articles are sanitized, wow. but basically Meyer Lansky had a photo of J. Edgar Hoover using his mouth on his main assistant, Clyde Tolson. Realistically, it was his boyfriend. They were a, a couple. <laughs> But then, once Hoover was blackmailed, he was like, how much worse could it get? And so he started hosting blackmail parties in connect collusion with these mobsters and inviting all sorts of important people to these blackmail parties to collect his own blackmail. This all happened in what was called the Blue Suite at the Plaza Hotel. And it was basically a bunch of male cross-dressing all caught on camera for like a decade and because Hoover was already blackmailed by the most powerful gangsters in the world, like he didn't, and he just went and hosted them, and everybody got blackmail on everybody. But the critical piece to understanding the gay aspect of rap music today and the whole situation back with Hoover is that at the time, remember Cold War, McCarthyism, like we got to get rid of all the communists. There was what was called the Lavender Scare, which is basically just saying that they were all really worried that gay people would get blackmailed by the Soviet Union. And so it wasn't good to be gay because if you were gay, you could get blackmailed because you wouldn't want anyone to know you were gay. And so don't be gay. And so you should be ashamed of being gay. And so then the blackmail is like, you know, see, it's like a big circle of how the one creates the other, creates the other, creates the other. Yeah, no, think about Just rap. a snowball effect. All the rappers are super hard and like gay people suck and then like a bunch of them are gay and they're getting blackmailed about it and so they rap more about how they're hard and gay people suck and it creates this little circle. Yeah. Blackmail industry learned early on back in the Cold War that it is much easier to do blackmail in a culture of anti-gayness because gayness is not wildly uncommon. Lots of people are gay. But the more you can stigmatize it and make it a taboo, the more they have to hide it, and the more easy it is to exploit it when you offer this taboo thing to the people that want it. And then the stronger your power over them is when you have them on film doing it. You feel? So, back to our boy Diddy, who founded his record label when he was only 24 years old. Became one of the most successful record labels of the time. He was able to do that because he was financed and supported by his mentor. And he found this guy, Diddy, on the up and up in one of his companies who we now know from this lawsuit and the other lawsuit filed by his ex-girlfriend, Cassie, which is horrific, disgusting, not a good read. 
we know that Diddy has some real effed up proclivities, as well as just generally probably being at least gay or bi. Freaking disgusting. Two. Finds this guy with questionable morals, questionable habits, and ready to go crazy haywall, haywire, whatever. Like he's willing to shoot people, he's willing to launder money, he's willing to do crazy, he's willing to do basically it. This is just me speculating on here on his motivations, but mentor did it brought him up and elevated him to a record executive by helping him found his label, Bad Boy Records. Allegedly, Clive well, Davis. He did that. But who and knows? Diddy, Allegedly. With a lot of help from a lot of other people all, like, all around him, proceeded to do 30 years worth of blackmail Actual blackmail. The rap industry. And to get where he is. That, to that makes sense. In it, like Usher, for example. Like Meek Mills. Mm -hmm. Now, even Justin Bieber is like directly in this storyline. And so, what you wind up with is a rap industry, a music industry that is full of people that are creating the types of music that the people above them, that the people that hired them, that the people that manage them want them to make. They're all terrified of stepping on the wrong toes mm -hmm. or getting out of line or doing what they're not supposed to for one black male reason or the other. And we wind up with an entire industry full of musicians that are glorifying gangs and and sex and drugs. I mean, think about it. There's no better way to undermine an entire population, an entire race, an entire culture than to target their kids with subversive messages that they're going to think is cool and the parents can't say shit about it because then the kids will just think it's cool. Yeah, Facts. I told y'all that Diddy and that baby oil are just a the thousand tip of bottles. The it seems that underneath all this drama with Diddy is a whole web of powerful people involved in some really dark dealings. Mm -hmm. And let's be real, we've probably only scratched the surface of what actually goes down at those freak off parties. If the rumors are even halfway true, the things we've heard are nothing compared to the real tea that's yet to come out. So let me know how you feel about all these new stories that are coming out about Diddy's freak offs. Is Diddy really? Epstein 2.0 and do you think he'll live to tell the tale and expose those higher ups he was allegedly blackmailing drop your comments below and stick around for this next video y'all uh, homeboy that was like hitting on all the the points at the end he was speaking major facts to the point where it's a was a little scary I was a little scary um but yeah let me know excuse me what you guys think all right I feel like no, I, I get, like, the really big feeling that Diddy went to the Playboy Mansion and he saw how Hef was living. Because um, Hef had a setup like that. Had cameras everywhere. And every everything and everyone was getting recorded at all all the time. Um, so that's what I feel like he got that idea from. And he just kind of went, went with it. Um, and then there were whispers of tunnels being under the mansion that led to Diddy's house and a bunch of other people's houses. But nobody really knows. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. Please like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell notification so you know if I just when I post it up to dates. Alright, if you like this video, please check out a playlist on the page. Alright, see you guys next time.